now know the name of the airline worker who stole a commercial airliner and crashed it just outside Seattle. We've learned that tomorrow the FBI is expected to begin their investigation at Horizon. Workers have been briefed that agents will be recreating the scene there, trying to piece together what took place on the ground before Russell maneuvered the plane into the air. It was a night when western Washington was transfixed to the sky. What the hell is this guy doing? People caught off guard, brought out their cell phones, and recorded a low-flying plane. The plane flying loops. A ground crewman with the uh, with horizon, I guess. As websites recorded air traffic controllers trying to figure out who was flying the plane and how to get him to land. Man, I'm sorry about this. I hope this doesn't ruin your day. Just flying the plane around, you seem comfortable with that? Oh, hell yeah, it's a blast, man. I've played video games before, so I, uh, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit. Richard Russell, 28 years old, was a ramp agent for Horizon Air, part of Alaska Airlines. One thing the FBI gives us is a timeline. At 7.15 that night, he arrives with a tow vehicle at Cargo 1 at the far north end of the airfield. 7.19, he climbs inside the Horizon Air Q400 and starts it three minutes later. 727, he exits the running plane and uses that tow vehicle to turn the plane toward the runways. A minute later, he's back inside. At 732, the aircraft begins to move. And air traffic controllers quickly realize something's wrong, demanding that the pilot of the plane, also known as a Dash 8, respond. Don't lose the aircraft on runway 16. You can't fly out of the, uh, out of the uh, cargo area. Sorry, you need a call. Now. In one minute, the Q400 is in the air. And there's more of the conversations with air traffic controllers. Russell talking about his amazing flight. Then an hour and 13 minutes after he takes off, he crashes it on sparsely populated Catron Island. The FBI says the crash was deliberate, saying, quote, if the pilot had wanted to avoid impact with the ground, he had time and energy to pull the column back, raise the nose, and initiate a climb. Instead, the column remained in a position forward of neutral and moved forward about six seconds prior to the end of the FDR data, referring to the flight data recorder. It is the FBI's job to look at crimes, and investigators concluded Russell had no help, there were no co-conspirators. But what we don't know is how this night started out. What was his state of mind? Was this a joyride certain to end in jail or one final exhilarating ride before taking his own life? Good evening. My name is Mike Matthews, uh, a friend of the family. The family has asked me to read this prepared statement. On behalf of the family, we are stunned and heartbroken. It may seem difficult for those watching at home to believe, but Bebo was a warm, compassionate man. It is impossible to encompass who he was in a press release. He was a faithful husband, a loving son, and a good friend. A childhood friend remarked that Bebo was loved by everyone because he was kind and gentle to each person he met. This is a complete shock to us. We are devastated by these events, and Jesus is truly the only one holding this family together right now. Without him, we would be hopeless. As the voice recordings show, Bebo's intent was not to harm anyone. He was right in saying that there are so many people who have loved him. We would like to thank the authorities who have been both helpful and respectful. Alaska Air for their resources, the community, his friends and his family for their incredible support and compassion, and Jesus whose steadfast love endures. We'd also like to thank the media for their sensitivity and acknowledging this as the only statement that will be released by the family. And we request that we now be given space to mourn. At this time, the family is moving forward with the difficult task of processing our grief. We appreciate your prayers. Thank you, the family of Bebo Russell. May we ask Thank you. No, I'm sorry. No well, questions this evening. Well, Thank you. And everyone standing by for departure, just hold uh, hold on with me for a second. Here's you. Right, zero seven zero. Approach, welcome. Final runway one six right. Welcome. Man, I'm a ground service agent. I don't know what that is. 
Clear to Portland, Seattle 6 is filed at 7,017. Yes, Start it up and get it to go. Uh, in a couple hours, I guess. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't know how to land it. I wasn't really planning on landing it. 99 via Bravo over to Van Silt, the opposite of Suntoff. I know how to fly one of those aircraft, but uh, we'll see what we can do and get you in contact with somebody. Alrighty, um, yeah, I just kind of want to do a couple maneuvers to see what it can do before I put it down, you know? Then departure, Boeing 464. And so I can uh, reach out to you a little easier. Up a little bit. I'm sorry, say that again? Sorry, I, uh, my mic can't came off. I threw up a little bit. Uh, you know, I, uh, hold on. Ah, shoot. Man, I'm sorry about this. I hope this doesn't ruin your day. 22, cross rail six left contact. Just flying the plane around. You seem comfortable with that? Oh, hell yeah. It's a blast, man. I've played video games before, so I, uh, you know, I know what I'm doing a little bit. Okay, and, uh, and you can see all the terrain around you. Uh, you've got no issue with visibility or anything? No, nah, everything's peachy, peachy clean. Just did a little circle around Rainier. It's beautiful. Um, I think I got some gas to go check out uh, the Olympics. And, uh, yeah. Okay, and uh, Rich, do you know, uh, are you able to tell what altitude you're at? Only one six left, a conic tower for your landing clearance. I threw up all inside of his bed. You'll be released when you when you taxi out. Matt. American 600. I was thinking about it, and then uh, probably a good thing I did. 494. Mexico 494, Monitor Tower 1. Our cops did join up. Yeah, that's all mumbo I have no idea what all that means. I wouldn't know how to uh, punch it in. I'm I'm uh, off autopilot. Okay, see ya. Make a right turn on Bravo. 5,500. Get me to the jets. No, I'm not taking you to any jets. I'm actually keeping you away from aircraft that are trying to land at SeaTac. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I don't want to screw with that. I'm glad, uh, glad you're not, uh, you know, screwing up everyone else's day. On account of me. All the traffic in front of you, make the daisy chain up around on to uh, Alpha. We're going to keep the vehicle clear this runway for... 446, can we just shut down? I'm, uh, I'm down to 2100. I started at like 30-something. Rich, you said you're at uh, 2,100 pounds of fuel left? Yeah, uh, I don't know what the burn burn itch, burn out is like on uh, uh, on takeoff, but uh, yeah, it burned quite a bit faster than I expected. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, we have the fuel inside. Kind of car? There is the... Uh, the runway just off your right side in about a mile. Do you see that? That's the uh, that's the uh, that's McCord uh, Field. Oh man, those guys would rough me up if I uh, tried landing there. I think I I think I might mess something up there too. I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, hopefully, oh, they probably got anti-aircraft. No, they don't have any of that stuff. Uh, we we're just trying to find a place for you to land safely. Yeah, not quite ready to bring it down just yet, but holy smokes, I gotta, I gotta stop looking at the fuel because it's going down quick. Okay, Rich, uh, if you could, if, could you start a left-hand turn, and uh, we'll we'll take you down to the uh, southeast, please. This is probably uh, like jail time for life, huh? I, I mean, I would hope it is for a guy like me. Well, Rich, we're not we're not gonna worry or think about that, but could you start a left-hand turn, please? Team two, horizon. Right 620. Thank you. And uh, he's going to try and help you out here a little bit, okay? Niner Joe. Right turn ending a 070. And I think you might have some questions. Rich, uh, I've got a pilot on with us. And uh, if you got any questions, you can ask him now. Hey, uh, well, first off, you're a little, a little breaking up a bit. Um, maybe I'm too far away. What's the distance on his frequency? 5261 heavy, uh, Roger, might be a little bit before you speed, just fine for now, thanks. Well, this, uh, you are, uh, very calm, collect, poised. Do you not run the 1-6 center? Okay, uh, crossing 1-6 center, hold short 1-6 left, Alaska, 589. Zero, descend to me like that in about two to three miles. Roger. 400 apparently is the, uh, a grounds crewman <laughs> with, uh, with Horizon, I guess. Okay. And, uh, okay, thank you. 
Right now he's just flying around, and uh, he just needs some help controlling his aircraft. Very good. Now, I mean, I don't need that much help. I played some video games before. Uh, I would like to figure out how to get this cabin altitude. Like, I know where the box is. I would like to get some, uh, make it, make it pressurized or something, so I'm not so lightheaded. Rich, what's your altitude? Cross one six hundred, cross one six left. Uh, come back around, come to gate door. I'll ask the four six. Uh, uh, do you know how long it's going to be? No idea. We have no idea right now. So if you just hold on Alpha, all those aircraft were um, in sequence. So we'll get you going as soon as we know. Okay, thanks a lot. In sequence, wait for. Yeah, I don't know anything. Uh, I don't know anything about the autopilot. I'm just kind of hand flying right now. Okay, you know how fast you're going. Let's uh, hold behind. Uh, uh, yeah. Zero, that's 20, 21. Uh, minimum wage. We'll, we'll uh, chalk it up to that. Maybe that'll uh, grease the gears a little bit with the higher up. Maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good, 52, 16, good day. I think I lost you behind some hills a little bit. I'm coming back, though. That's good, 718, I believe so. Uh, still working on an issue. Um, I don't really have an estimate on how long that may be. Okay, thank you. Of, uh, one six left, American seven, Alaska six ninety one. Damn it, Andrew! People's lives are at stake here. Now, Rich, don't don't say stuff like that. Nah, I just told you, I'm not. I don't want to hear no one. I just want you to whisper sweet nothings into my ear. And uh, six hundred, uh, Roger. That's gonna be a while before we can get into uh, cargo five one two one. Would that be better than uh, trying to land it? Like I know how to put the landing gear down. Seven thousand. Expect flight level four one zero one. Put your uh, your power at probably fifty percent. That'd be the two top gauges right in the center on that glass uh, display there. And then press. Uh, well, tell me, uh, do your power at fifty percent, or tell me what you got. Yeah, I got it like flight idle. Well, that's too slow. Bring it up to like fifty. Any of you have a ramp to this twenty uh, yes, two. Visual sixteen right sixty seven. Right All right, no problem, yeah, because uh, I just want to know if we can, uh, you know, do a water service for the passengers back here. Uh, 4,000, so straight in. Actually, at or about 3,000. Advise to go inside. Their side on the bottom, it says HDG, and it's got a little blue uh, M on it. You can crank that around, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'll tell you what, let's just do this. Um, push. You see the HDD, HDG button uh, right by that little thumb wheel? On pop across, one six ten across one. What's all the airplanes doing on Alpha? It's going to maintain 8,000. Plus 120. No, you can do that with these things. Uh, so what would, if you were to do it, how would you do it? Well, I'd try to figure out how to use the autopilot first. On the uh, Roger text spot, uh, 88 via problem, Tony France. 88, and over ramp, 9257. Not concentrate so much on flying the airplane. Hey, you think if I land this successfully, uh, Alaska will give me a job as a pilot? Uh, you know, I think they would give you a job of doing anything if you could pull this off. Yeah, right. Nah, I'm a white guy, eh? Hey, three, making one two zero four better to a five mile final contact point now now for the one two zero point six. Hey, we'll do that with the season. We're going to go to the top. That's five talking to that aircraft at this time. Uh, if they need your assistance, I will uh, I will let you know, but they are talking to that aircraft right now. Roger. 20 to tomorrow. Yeah, you do, you man. Hey, hey FAA guy, Andrew, you on? Yeah, I, I'm still here, Rich. To now maintain one zero ten thousand, please. Three, seven, three. Bad, but kind of not either. Uh, if you wanted to land, probably the best bet is that uh, runway just ahead and to your left. Again, that's uh, McCord Field. Um, if you wanted to try, that might be the best way to set up and see if you can land there. Yeah. Or just like the uh, pilot suggests, another option would be over Puget Sound into the water. Dang, uh, did you talk to McCord yet? Because I don't think I'd be happy with you telling me I could land like that because I could mess some stuff up. Well, Rich, I already talked to him, and uh, just like me, what we want to see is you not get hurt or anybody else get hurt. So, like I said, if you want to try to land, that's probably the best place to go. Hey, I want the court.
coordinates of that orca with the, you know, the mama orca with the baby. I want to go see that guy. 285, runway 16 strike, put a land. Behind you, there is another aircraft. Would you be willing to talk to them if they're on the frequency and maybe they can help you land? Six. Uh, let me check for you. Hang on. That's right. It's up to you guys that we got one going just in case. Okay, thank you. Check around with that one. Back and get some water. Hey, what's the what's that airport right there behind me? Like to my left. Okay, Rich. Well, first of all, we we just need you to keep flying the aircraft. And so if you could just stay there and keep flying the aircraft. The air, the uh, the airport you just passed over on your left, that's the uh, Tacoma Narrows Airport. I mean, that's also an option if you want to try going there. But uh, like I said earlier, McCord, that's a, that's a bigger runway if you wanted to try to land there. 446, we're going to go ahead and shut down. Okay. Oh, that's disgusting. One sec. Hey, Rich, this is Captain Bill here. We're still uh, listening. My airplane's doing uh, just fine. How's yours? Flight 85, left to November, hold short of runway 1. I said it, it would be a better option, I think, if you tried to land it or even land it on the water. Yeah. Hey, is that pilot on? I want to know uh, what this weather's going to be like in the Olympics. Well, if you can see the Olympics, the weather's good. I can see the Olympics from my window, and it looks pretty good over there. All right, because I, I hit some, uh, felt like turbulence around right near, but there was no clouds hardly. Oh, uh, that's just the uh, the wind blowing over all the bumpy surfaces there. What the hell? Holy shit. Oh my god. What is happening right now? My phone, you got it? Yes. It's a fucking Alaska Airlines Q400. What the fuck is he doing over here? Alaska. Yeah. Dude, that's not cool. He's looking for somewhere to fucking land. What is happening? Hey, that's what's going on. I don't know. That he should never be that low over here. No. That's an Alaska Airlines flight. I saw one of those. Holy crap. Where is he going? Where? Second there, because of the way it looked when he was going over the garage, it looked like. Where is he, he was going? Crashing. Go get the truck keys and get my wallet. I got a lot of people that care about me, and uh, it's gonna disappoint them to, to hear that I did this. Um, I would like to apologize to each and every one of them. Um, just a broken guy. Got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it <clears throat> until now.